Hello everyone and welcome to a really awesome game from round 10 of the 2019 Singfield Cup. It's Magnus Carlsen versus Wesley So and uh, it's a really a long theoretical struggle uh, where uh, it just uh, shows you how important it is to, to always study the end game. So without further ado, let's check it out. Uh, Magnus Carlsen is still without a loss, uh, but also still without a win. Uh, all games have been drawn so far. Uh, let's see what happens. Uh, Carlsen opens with e4. Uh, we have e5, knight to f3, knight to c6, and bishop to c4. Uh, we have bishop to c5, uh, the Italian game is on the board, and here, of course, uh, b4 is uh, an excellent idea. The Evans Gambit, uh, you should always play it, but it was not played in this game. Here, a Magnus Castled. Uh, I know life uh, isn't fair, but uh, what are you going to do? Uh, we have knight to f6, d3, uh, Joko Piano is on the board, and we have castles by black. We have c3, uh, d6, and now h3. Uh, just making some room for the king, taking away the g4 square from black's pieces. We have h6, Wesley does the same, and now rook to e1. Uh, we have a6, this is all standard Joko Piano stuff. Uh, we have a4, pre uh, preventing b5, and here we have a5, knight bd2 by Magnus, uh, and here bishop to, uh, bishop to e6 by Wesley was played. Uh, Wesley already had this position against um, Anish Giri in uh, the Grandchester uh, that was played in Zagreb, uh, where bishop to a7 was played. Uh, that game ended in a draw against Giri, but here uh, Wesley prefers bishop to e6. Uh, and here Magnus avoids the trade with bishop to b5. Uh, we have knight a7, attacking Carlsen's bishop, and now d4. Uh, uh, Wesley goes uh, e captures on d4, sorry, <laughs> e captures on d4 is possible. Uh, uh, Peter Svidler played it against uh, Maxim Varshiel in the 2017 World Cup uh, in Tbilisi, Georgia, uh, and that game ended in a draw, but here, again, Wesley pre prefers knight b5. It's a much more uh, common move in this position. D captures on c5 and now knight back to a7. Uh, with b3 by Carlsen, uh, preparing bishop to a3. Uh, also, this knight uh, is now supported if if Magnus wants to bring it over to c4, uh, which he does, as you all have seen from the thumbnail. Uh, with rook to e8, uh, and now c captures on d6. With queen captures on d6 and bishop to a3, attacking the queen. And this position has been reached before. Uh, uh, both uh, both times it, it was reached, it was uh, by Maxim Vashir Lagrav. Uh, for example, once he uh, reached it against uh, uh, Grishuk, where queen to a6 was played by Grishuk, also in the 2017 World Cup in Belize, Georgia. That game ended in a draw. Uh, second time... Uh, uh, was also against uh, between uh, Maxim Vashel Grav, but I don't uh, know who his opponent was, maybe even Wesley So, uh, where c5 was played. Uh, yeah, it was uh, yeah, it was uh, Maxim Vashel Grav versus Wesley So, but it was a blitz game in the St. Louis blitz tournament uh, that was played uh, 10 days ago. Uh, and in that game, uh, we had queen to e2. Uh, so this was played by Maxim against Wesley, but Magnus goes for knight to c4. It's a new move and it offers, uh, well, to go into the end game uh, right away. So what are you going to do? Your uh, queen is under attack and uh, you have to play something. You could move the queen, let's say queen d7, just get out of the way, or queen to c7, but Wesley prefers queen captures queen. We have rook captures on d1 and now bishop captures on c4. So this is a... Uh, uh, a strange thing to allow. B captures on c4, and you can see that Magnus voluntarily ruined his pawn structure here. But what it does is it it ke keeps uh, an eye on the b5 square. So for the rest of the game, Wesley Wesley will have a weak b pawn. You will never be able to push b5. And also for the moment, uh, Carlsen has control of the d file. So it, it does have a, a plus side to ruining your pawn structure. Uh, but obviously, Magnus prepared something uh, as he did uh, play th this line with b6 by Wesley and now knight to h4. Uh, a very nice uh, move uh, that uh, you know, uh, is uh, it's a multi purpose move. You can't go rook d6 right away, it doesn't uh, really do anything. Yes, it's a very nice rook lift. You're, you're hoping for rook ad1, but knight to c8 is coming, attacks the rook, uh, defends the b6 pawn, and now you have to go back. Uh, if you try something like rook to c6, then uh, then black will go knight d7, guard d5 pawn, rook a7 uh, to, to keep an eye on the 7th rank, and then knight e7, and your rook uh, will, uh, you know, uh, get get in trouble for, for overstaying his welcome. 
So uh, Magnus prepared knight to h4 here and now rook a to d8. If you try g6 right away to prevent the knight, let's say, from reaching f5, then rook d6 is very strong because now it comes with a double attack against the knight and the pawn on b6. So first we have after knight h4, rook a d8 by Wesley and now uh, Carlsen goes f3. Uh, we have g6 now, it's not a problem since now uh, Wesley's rook also guards the d6 square, and now g3, and now uh, you can see that this knight is now coming to g2, to e3, and to d5, and from there it will also help out with an attack against the weak b6 pawn, uh, whereas uh, the rook will go to b1 to constantly keep an eye on the b6 pawn. We have knight to h5 by Wesley. And now king to f2, the first defending the pawn with knight back to knight to c6, and now bishop to c1. The bishop is no longer useful on this diagonal, so Carlson transfers it uh, to this diagonal here. Uh, we have king to g7, also the h6 pawn was under attack, uh, and now bishop to e3. We have rook captures on d1, rook captures and rook to d8. Wesley hopes to uh, trade the other pair of rooks as well, uh, but Magnus is not interested. He needs this rook to constantly put pressure on this pawn here. And rook to b8, you have to play it, uh, even though uh, it's, a, it's a tough move to play. Uh, you, you can never move the knight. If you move the knight, your rook is not protected. Bishop captures on c5 would be, uh, would, would be possible. So here, uh, Wesley's position is very passive. His rook has to keep an eye on the b6 pawn, and his knight has to stay there to keep an eye on the rook, otherwise you're, you're getting bishop captures on c5. Uh, and now, uh, the plan we've discussed, Magnus needs to get this knight to d5. So how do you do it? First, you need to move the king, you need to move the bishop, make room for the knight on e3, and then you can play knight g2, e3 to d5. And this is what uh, Carlsen starts, knight g2. Uh, we have knight to f6, Wesley now gets, uh, tries to get the other knight into the game. King e2, making room for the bishop, so you can make room for the knight. We have knight to e8, uh, and now bishop to f2, freeing the e3 square for Magnus' knight. We have knight to d6, and now knight to e3. And here Wesley plays knight to e7, to, uh, to meet knight d5 with knight captures on d5. But it's not a problem, this is exactly what Magnus wanted. We have knight to d5, now comes knight captures on d5, c captures on d5, or you can just, you, you can't allow the knight to remain there. Uh, and now comes rook to b7. Again, you have to play it because, again, there's the threat of bishop captures on c5. Your rook on b8 is un un unprotected. Uh, so rook to b7, again, uh, very passive position for Wesley as the rook has to keep an eye on the pawn and the knight has to keep an eye on the rook uh, all the time. So there aren't really any active moves here. Carlsen plays uh, king to uh, d3. And also uh, the knight has to remain there not only to, to defend the rook, even if you could defend the rook some uh, other way, you don't want to allow king c4 to b5 to c6, that's just game over. So Wesley has to try uh, an active plan with f5 and now Carlsen plays uh, an excellent move, c4. c4 with the idea of transferring this bishop to this diagonal now, bishop to e1 with the threat of bishop captures on a5, and black has no no good ways of meeting this thre threat. Uh, Wesley played pawn captures, we have pawn captures, and now you can't just wait. For example, if g5 you just get bishop to e1 and there's no defense, uh, bishop captures on a4, on a5 is coming, then this pawn falls, uh, and so on, and so on. So, after f captures on e4, Wesley decided to abandon the b6 pawn, he played rook to f7. He went after the bishop on f2, but Carlsen said, okay, uh, this is w exactly what I wanted. Rook captures on b6, we have rook captures on f2, and now rook captures uh, on d6. Uh, rook f3 check, king e2, and then now rook to c3. If you capture this pawn, uh, then rook c6, you make room for this best pawn you're going to capture here, capture here, and, well, uh, the, the central pawns are more important than, than these guys here. So Wesley goes for the c4 pawn with uh, rook to c3, uh, and now rook to e6. Uh, we have rook captures on c4, rook captures on e5, and now comes rook captures on a4. Material on the board is equal, uh, but that's beside the point. We have rook to e7 by Magnus. Magnus has two connected pass pawns in the center of the board. Uh, and here, with king to f8, uh, the game would continue. Uh, white would play rook e6, go after these pawns, you can go rook c6. Behind this pawn, you can go rook a6, go after that pawn. Uh, but still, you're going to play king f3, guard your pawn, and start pushing your d pawn. This is the idea. Here, however, after rook to e7 check, Wesley played king to f6, but this just loses on the spot. 
So feel free uh, to pause the video and try to find why it loses on the spot. Uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. Uh, so for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations. Uh, you have just won on the spot. And for those of you who just won to enjoy the show, here Carlson played d6 and it was in this position that Wesley so resigned the game uh, on move 43. Uh, why did he resign? Well, now there's no defense. e5 check is coming and then this pawn just queens. For example, you could play rook d4, you could put a rook behind the pass pawn, but those are two connected pass pawns. Uh, e5 check is coming, king f5, now d7. Uh, and, uh, well, e6 is coming, this will guard the pawn, so whatever you do, and there are no active moves here. Uh, rook e4 check is nothing, you're just gonna move the king, so let's say h5 e6 is coming and then after king f6 just rook e8 and now whatever you do just d8 uh, queen and it's game over so really really amazing stuff uh, and it's uh, really amazing how simple this game is uh, how, how magnus improved on the game maxim vashiel lagrav played against wesley so in a blitz game in the st louis uh, blitz tournament uh, just played that knight c4 voluntarily ruined his pawn structure but it was such a such an incredible active position for white whereas black had no no options it's really an interesting game for for some longer analysis where you can learn a lot from the end game uh, but uh, also why well, i use this quote uh, by by paul benko and i'm gonna uh, use a bit more of his quotes in the future videos uh, agreeing to draws in the middle game equal or otherwise deprives you of the opportunity to practice playing end games and the end game is probably where you need the most practice so if you feel you are uh, you've studied the end game more than your opponent you definitely want to play an end game even if it's an equal end game and you just might outplay your opponent so here really really a remarkable remarkable game such a simple elegant game and i, I really liked it so I, I do hope you enjoyed it as well now let's check out the standings as this uh, really uh, influences the standings as uh, now carlson caught up to uh, the leaders well not the leaders uh, ding liren still the sole leader with six points but then we have uh, magnus uh, nepo uh, anand and karakin with five and a half points uh, we have uh, with five points karwana maxim vashirolagrav and shahrir mamedyarov with four and a half, Anish Giri and Hikaru Nakamura, and with four, uh, Wesley So and Levon Aronan. It will be interesting, uh, in the final round, Carlsen faces Maxim Vashiel Lagrav. Carlsen has the black pieces, so his task of uh, uh, overcoming uh, <laughs> uh, Maxim is, uh, uh, you know, uh, greater with the black pieces, whereas Ding, uh, the leader of the tournament, faces Mamed Yarov. Uh, and if Ding, uh, of course, wins in the last round, Ding wins the tournament. And... Uh, uh, I caught a glimpse of the interview with Mamed Yarov. He said that he has never beaten Ding in a classical game. He had a plus 10 evaluation against him. And Ding is just such a strong fighter. He survives anything like you've seen in his game against Anand. Where Anand just had everything but Ding was able to defend. Uh, because Ding really thrives in, in tough complicated positions. With, with lots of uh, uh, tactical opportunities. That's, uh, you know, that's his happy hunting ground. Uh, and it, it's going to be very interesting what Mamed Yarov can uh, try with the black pieces against Ding in the final round. So everyone still has a chance. It's still, uh, you know, all, all the uh, options are open in the uh, in the last round, and it's going to be very exciting. So yeah, uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Jonathan Willis Jarvis, uh, Paul Guest, and Steve Kimmins, uh, Kimmins for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon uh, with another video probably from round 10, uh, continuing the Capablanca saga and, of course, checking up on your suggestions. So thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.